Berkeley County Council. I do not know how that got started, but I am not going to do that. I am going, am serving in the House of Delegates and intend to be a candidate for re-election in 2020. In fact, uh, on that regard, I passed out a flyer to you. I'm having a, a town hall pre-legislative uh, meeting in Falling Waters uh, this Saturday from 2 to, 5, 2 to 4 p.m. Uh, at Rocky's Pizza in Falling Waters. Uh, Delegate Bibby is going to be joining me for that. But the main issue that I want to uh, speak with you today is during the summer interims, the judicial committees uh, of the House of Delegates and the Senate, state Senate, have been meeting. And one of the things we've been talking about is going to be coming up during the legislative session. And it's an interest I, uh, item of interest, I think, which will be of interest to you. And it has to do with criminal justice. Uh, and I'm very much interested in it because I spent 17 years as criminal justice case management. There's not going to be much wiggle room in the state budget this year. In fact, there's going to be some uh, anxiety about whether or not we have to cut the budget. So money is going to be tight. But one of the things that we are going to be seriously looking at is legislation uh, to ease the expense uh, on the criminal justice system. Uh, and one of the, uh, there's a couple things that are coming up, one of which, two of which I'll mention specifically. Currently, uh, West Virginia has what we call good time laws uh, if you're for inmates. If you're on good behavior, you get X number of days off for your sentence. Other states have that in addition to industrial or programming time off, uh, where they get additional time off for going to school or doing certain programs or rehabilitation programs. Uh, we're seriously looking at implementing that in West Virginia. Uh, for more incentive for early release for inmates. And of course, if there's early release for inmates, that will reduce uh, incarceration costs uh, for the taxpayers, including our regional jails. The other thing that we're looking at is pre-trial. Uh, one of the concerns we have is that someone's indicted on a crime and waiting for, waiting for trial, they're sitting in the jail. Uh, 69. I can't have one because I'm an alcoholic. So I'm very much uh, familiar with, with, the, with the issue of alcoholism and drinking. I was upset yesterday to learn that uh, there's some people in the legislature that uh, want to go the other way with this, uh, including implementing the death penalty for drug offenders, which I think is just, I can't wrap my head around. I just can't wrap my head around. I think that I think that uh, a lot of the things you spoke about today are good short-term resolutions to addressing concerns that that all the counties have. But I think I think a little broader look, maybe a, a more of a, a visionary for long term, would be to step up the game immensely in our regional jails to uh, to start some type of rehabilitation of these uh, people that are in there and and do a better job with that because not only not only do we have a lot of problems with drugs getting into the facilities we're not taking care of the people so that they um, they don't have the addiction that they um, had when they got in there my, my uh, experience as a criminal case justice manager has been that sadly when somebody goes into prison they're worse when they go out than when they go in uh, because they become street smart in the wrong ways um, absolutely right unfortunately the pressure that came to the judiciary judiciary committees was the realization that if we don't do something about the burgeoning inmate population we're going to have to start building some new prisons and they looked at the expense of that and they said well we got to do something but whatever the motivation, the worst way to take care of people that have problems is to incarcerate them. Uh, rehabilitation. Uh, I remember years and years ago, uh, somebody said to me, what's your view of criminal justice? Should it be to punish people or to be to rehabil rehabilitate them as far as imprisoning people? And I said, well, number one, I said, I don't think people should be incarcerated unless they're a public safety. Let's start with that. Uh, if they're not a danger to public safety, 
why are we giving them essentially lock up welfare? <coughs> uh, it ex it's an expense to the taxpayers, and it just destroys an individual's uh, individual's uh, chance to go forward. I remember when I worked at the state prison system in Maryland, um, we'd have guys who are in prison for 30 or 40 years, and when they were released, they said, "Okay, you hit the street. Here's 40 bucks. See." Uh, it the recidivism rate uh, was awful. Good news is the recidivism rate in West Virginia is one of the best in the country, uh, which is which is uh, amazing. Uh, it's uh, the the, or the lack of recidivism. Uh, so that's that's good news. Unfortunately, West Virginia, the United States has more per capita incarceration than any other country, uh, to the best of my knowledge. And West Virginia's rate of incarceration is pretty high too. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Anyone else? See the motion to approve the agenda. Mr. President, I move we approve the agenda for December the 5th, 2019. Thank you. Motion to make and second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The motion carries. Any questions on the purchase order? David, sir, Tracy, I see that the very first one up there, there's some invoices that was actually invoices from the previous physical year. You can come here. Come up to the podium there, Miss Tra Miss McCorney. But uh no there's there's uh there's some invoices from the sheriff's department on the seven hundred account that was dated last physical year in June. Yeah the um, earliest we received eight uh early last week and and Tracy got them via email and brought it to my attention right away. Mm -hmm. They were incurred last fiscal year with the oldest one, with the oldest invoice dated March 19. So, okay, all right, and they are they are. In. Um, as far as I know of, if this money would, I mean, that's why we encumber invoices, okay. right? And and if this money should have been coming out last year's budget, I look at this as someone that is able to. If we're if we're not. If we're not, if they're not, the invoices aren't being submitted for six months. That's one way to blow your budget, put it on the next elected official. That's right. Right. It is. Well, so, and the and the rules guard against that. Okay. All right. So, in my opinion, um, the sheriff, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the council to deny payment on this, and this sheriff can pay it out of his gun fund from uh, since it was last year's invoice. The thing that's interesting is don't 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 they keep track of all of everything they purchase so that at the before the end of the year they can they can come forward and say you know we got this stuff pending that hasn't has the bills haven't came in or whatever but they're encumbering funds I mean isn't that what they're supposed to do is that is yes that sir if we go through that every May as you know we go through it says we have a program I, in place to do that. Alan actually sends, I'm aware of the process uh, that we go through. But right. Sends a, a note yes. out to every constitutional officer and every department head saying if you have things that you need to uncover, <coughs> get it done by this day. And that's so that we can comply with the law. So this supplier, we've had invoices for this year, right? Huh? So, there, so therefore, you're telling me that there's other invoices out there for the last six months, probably. Well, Mr. Bentley, you want to prepare a letter to the sheriff? Be happy to. Okay. All right. So, everybody agree to pull that one? One other matter for the council attention, and it's not on your purchase order log. Um, every other year, the Berkeley County the March for Berkeley County Chamber of Commerce, as you know. Let, let, me, let me do I'm a, sorry. Do you want to do a motion? I'll take that from the... Yeah, but um, I, not, I just want to make another statement to Mr. Bentley. I said, I think part of your letter, not that I'm trying to tell you how to write letters, <laughs> but I need to make a statement in there that this is something that is very unacceptable, um, especially going into election year. But it could be rolled over to another administration. Now, if I'm going to guess, I'm going to say that could be up to the individual to pay per, uh, personally. 
Well, the rule is uh, all elected officials have to submit their invoices in a timely way because and this rule, this law was enacted originally aimed at sheriffs to make sure that the sheriff did not spend more uh, than one half his budget, budget right. in his last year or last year before the election. That's to protect a new administration coming in potentially. And I know the law also states that the county council spent more than three percent of the of their budget then they're personally responsible for that's right so i mean do more than a casual but uh, deficit uh, it makes the five of you responsible but that, that isn't aimed at no, the but, other but, under, but understand there's a way for us to stay within our budget we just postpone the bills that's so there's, right. a, there's a safeguard for us not to be able to do that as well. That's right. There okay. is. Uh, and Council <coughs> Vice President Delia is correct. We needed a, a motion to pull that from the purchase order law. Motion to the sheriff's request. Previous years, the language. The Gauls LLC. Yes. For. Actually, the total is $3,467.97. Right. Yes. Motion been made to have second. Second. Seconded. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, anyone opposed? The motion carries. Any other concerns on the purchase order? <coughs> right. Internal. Right. I do have one I'm sorry. other. Yes, you do. I do have one other just to bring something to Council's attention. Um, as you're aware, every other year, the Martinsburg Berkeley County Chamber of Commerce does their does a an image book, mm -hmm. um, which is a full color magazine style book that uh, kind of highlights um, businesses and governments and things like that in, in the county. Uh, every year, every other year, the county uh, Berkeley County has participated in the image book. 2020 will be um, the next publication uh, for 2020, 2021. Um, the cost of a full page uh, in the image book is the same as it has been for previous years, is, is $2,000. Uh, I've met with Tina and talked to Tina and indicated to her that I felt the council would want to continue to support that. Is there any, any problems with that? Obviously. Okay. Want to make Everybody sure. agree with that? Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, we're, we're moving on to your budget revision, Mr. Davis. Yes, sir. The council has one internal budget revision for your consideration. Um, the request actually comes from the Honorable Sheriff Curtis Keller, uh, Department 700, which is the Sheriff's Law Enforcement Budget. Sheriff Keller's requesting that he be allowed to reduce line 345 uniforms by $5,000. Current unencumbered fund balance is $55,000.79 with 8.33% spent to date and increased line 226 insurance and bonds by $5,000. That line item currently has um, a zero balance. The transfer of funds is needed to cover uh, a police professional liability claim deductible. Um, okay. All right. And then while we're talking about insurance, I notice there's another cruiser that's been sideswiped and possibly totaled over there. Yes, sir. One of the new, actually, one of the new Durango. Oh, no, there's another one over there. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, on. that's one of the Ford um, Tauruses. Right. Comment to Mr. Blake. Transaction loss. Yes, ma'am. It's an ongoing claim. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Just want to make sure. Um, yeah. It's, yeah, a, it's, it's a, not a vehicle. It's a police. Yeah. Pro, it's a police professional liability claim. That's on. So just to, that's four. Just want to make sure we're trying to keep everything right here. Yes, ma'am. That's four vehicles. Yeah. 
<clears throat> okay, anything else? No, sir. Change in status. We have a new hire recommendation received from the Honorable Sheriff Curtis Keller for Julie Bush as a tax deputy with value of 26771 effective December 16, 2000. New hire recommendation recommendation received from the Honorable Virginia Sign, Circuit Clerk for Myra Myers as a deputy clerk with an annual salary of 25554 effective December 15, 2008. New hire recommendation received from Tim Zai, Director of Community Corrections for Barbara McNeil as a case manager with an annual salary of $38,152, effective December 9, 2019. New hire recommendation received from Tim Zai, uh, Director of Community Corrections for Dennis Morgan as a case manager with an annual salary of $42,000, effective January 6, 2020. New hire recommendation received from Tenzaya, Director of Community Corrections for Ronald Gaither as a home confinement officer with an annual salary of $34,500, effective December 16, 2019. New hire recommendation received from the Honorable Sheriff Curtis Keller for Jody Stickler as a Sheriff's Deputy with an annual salary of $39,500, effective December 16, 2019. Change of status received from Tim Zai, Director of Community Corrections for Crystal Peterson. He will uh, be going from part-time recovery resource center peer recovery coach with, with a hourly rate of $14.40 to a full-time daily report center recovery coach with an annual salary of $20 December 2019. Change in status received from Mike Lang, Chief Court Marshal Paul Nicola. Uh, he will be uh, going from the Deputy Marshal 1 with an annual salary of $29,375 to the Deputy Marshal 2 with an annual salary of $30,000, effective December 1st. Letter of resignation received from the Sheriff's Tax Office for Casey Miller, effective December 11, 2019. Questions on change in staff. We have approval of minutes for November 14, 2019. Any present? Any corrections or those? If not, uh, moving on to the county council calendars. We'll be uh, next Thursday at 9 30 a.m. Commissions have Councilperson Mock on WEPM tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Monday, on the 9th, we have 2.30 p.m. LEPC, 5 p.m. Water District, 6 p.m. Farm Land Protection. Wednesday, the 11th, 9.30 a.m. Development Authority, 6 p.m. Round House Authority. Thursday, the 12th, 6.30 p.m. Fire Board. Okay. I'm just going to have a party since Mr. Barnhart's out of town. Mm -hmm. Have a bond reduction for Brattle Creek Phase One, file number 076 04. Engineering Department has made that recommendation. Bond release for Arcadia Community LLC, Yorkshire Glen Phase One, Section One, grading bond release. Engineering Department has made that recommendation. Bond release for Arcadia Communities LLC, Yorkshire Glen Phase Two, Section One, grading bond release. Engineering Department has made that recommendation. The bond reduction for Panhandle Builders, Stonecraft, Phase 3, Lots 126 through 137, Lots 161 through 172, Lots 191 through 198, and the open space, file number 022-15, and Engineering has, uh, Department has made that recommendation. I see Mr. Stansbury is in the audience, so anybody have any questions for Dirk? No question, just assuming he checked all the... Stormwater, all that's taken care of. Complete all basically last thing left is the homeowner association. Pretty good, sir. 
Right. That's a pretty good incentive. Yes. Thank you. Motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Motion has been made. Seconded. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Hess, good morning, sir. We have some exonerations. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> yes, I do have a couple this week. Um, we had two real estate uh, corrections we had to make, and they were office air. We had three for personal property. <clears throat> and the first two we have for real estate, uh, one for Stephen Hoover, $88.67. One for Robert Barat, uh, $7.10. So those two totaled up as $95.77. All right, need a motion on two real estate tax exoneration due to office there. Can I make a, uh, I'll make a motion to uh, accept the motion to be made. And second, any discussion? Discussion. Uh, the property does exist. That was something that are we consolidating? What are we doing? No, it, it, uh, it got put on the tax records and it shouldn't have been put on the tax records. And so it, it got sold for taxes. And then uh, Barat, Mr. Barat, bought it, and he researched it. And he said this should have been moved into another so, partial back a couple of years ago. So we just got it. So now, it. so now this so clears everything it's, up. It's gone. Thank it's, you. It's off the record. So they <laughs> bought air. Well, yeah, they bought it tax sale. No, and, I you know, and, uh, I understand but, how it happens. But it's you know they, they have them now and again like that. I mean, yeah. So. But if we've got a couple we need to get an attorney to do uh, some research on because we're just hanging out there. And uh, if there's a deed, we have to we have to put them on record. It's recorded at the courthouse. Right. <laughs> but so it's cleaned up. So okay. that that's why I was, I was trying to make sure that it's finally yeah. <clears throat> gone. Thank you. Yep, that one's gone. All in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The motion carries. You have three personal tax exonerations due to officer. I do. I do, yes. Um, yeah, I have one for Jeff Largo for $28.72. I have one for Donald Reynolds for $79.56. And one for Patrick Fleming. Uh, it was a leased vehicle and should have been, should have been, should have been put on his uh, assessment, but for $622.83. Total up those three comes up to seven thirty one at eleven. You know, motion on the three personal tax exoneration office there. No move. Second. Motion has been made seconded. Any uh, discussion? Well, you know when I, I remember years ago when they talked about keying cars, they were it meaning something totally different than what he's, <laughs> he's got listed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. What opposed? Good, thank you. Thank you, sir. Board meeting reports, Mrs. Monk. Well, being the end of uh, Thanksgiving, things are uh, ramping up now that's in December, but we're slowing down there. We had the uh, bridge report, and even after all of the water issues and stuff, right now, at this date and time, the amount of time spent on the project is 84% and they're at 83%. So they've caught all up. Thank goodness for that, getting, getting everything. Um, one of the things that's been fascinating is the storm water, and they are they've got that uh, under control, and um, and they're also removing parts of the structure for the river bridge, the forty day outlook. So they are moving right along. Very great. Two, I attended the um, promotions by the sheriff's department. It was a very nice ceremony. Uh, we have two of our officers who are up in one captain. Uh, a sergeant. So uh, these folks are have our backs here in the county, and it's important for them to be moved up according to civil service. And that was that particular uh, meeting. On the other side, the things I've been working on is the uh, no boy. I'm uh, getting more pictures done to send to Matthews Bronze. They wanted photos. That's in process, and um, uh, people will get the uh, volunteer unit. Now I'm also working on the 50th of the county. One of the things we have to do is change the seal. So that's one of the things we have to allocate and 
expected some funding to start working on these projects to move forward. So, just letting you know of some, trying to keep you up to date with what's happening. So, um, interesting. Yeah, having some talk about that the celebration a couple months ago. Right. To start so, we're working on getting that, that organized. So, that's where we are. Thank you. Yes, sir. I had a planning commission meeting Monday. I was a little bit late. Uh, throughout the collect, collected or collected time? conflicting time, another meeting. Sorry. Both. <laughs> sorry. Thank you, Doug. Um, for pointing that out. Yeah, for pointing. That trains out of station. That trains out of station. We had several public hearings. Uh, there was a couple uh, uh, resident concerns. Uh, properly but however the outcome is still going to be the same with the disgruntled all the regular yep yep they were and um the airport runway protection zone ordinance was uh asked by our body to bring this body for implementation and we'll be pretty soon Failure. um no i'm sorry but the air well no but the airport's been Involved in it, they like a copy sent to the board members too. Figure it. Good. See if they can do that. I would hope that we we have a meeting coming up. I think it's next week. Um, would hope that they would have information on that, not on our agenda. I'll, uh, I'll it is sure. there is a topic of discussion right now that we're having about properties that are potential questions in that zone. I'll make sure uh, that uh, Mr. Deal is on our planning commission board as well as airport. I guess the um, <clears throat> I did have one meeting um, that I missed due to I was actually Tuesday I was in the parade and at the same time I had a sewer discipline both places at once. So I, I did, uh, and that's the Christmas parade in downtown Mark. So I missed that. Um, actually, the night before, they had uh, a, an event called Jingle Downtown, which was really probably the best um, one they've had. They've, I think it's five years now they've been having that, where you go to uh, uh, break off in groups and you go to business to business to business to stay open and go do a little shopping. It's nice to see that amount of traffic at night, evening, walking the street and uh, enjoying some of the downtown businesses. You know, on uh, Friday, the, the town had the annual Christmas tree lighting and it was uh, without a doubt the largest one. Uh, had live entertainment. Um, put on by uh, airborne church members. I think the whole thing was sponsored by the church as well, and it was uh, it was uh, it was a real real nice event. Nice event to have green set up. Yeah, and, real nice. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. It was it was uh, there was some drone pictures out there of it, and just absolutely beautiful um, the look of it from the drone. It, really it was. I saw that on Facebook. Actually, I really shared it quite a bit. Really nice. A lot of people there too, but that's all. Enjoying the holiday and the, you know, all the spirit, holiday right? festivities, absolutely. It is. It is. All right. Um, I have nothing to report on. We have uh, some um, sending out some thank you letters to John Hillary and Margaret Lefevre for the uh, historical landmark board for serving on that. Out to David Clark for a senior service board. Chose not to be reappointed. Thank you, letters going out to Ron Collins, uh, Collins of that, uh, Richard Dennis, and Craig Potter from the senior service board. They are ineligible for reappointment. Uh, reappointment letter received from Elizabeth Lang for the senior service board. Her term expires December 31st, so we need to. I can reappoint Elizabeth. Um, okay, we can do that. I'm sorry. I'd like to, 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 I'd like to
Motion has been made, second. seconded. Any discussion? Ever say aye? Aye. aye. Opposed? Carries. Yeah. I'd like to. I'd like to make an appointment uh, a recommendation as well for Ron Fitzpatrick to the Airport Authority Where's to it? to fill uh, um, uh, Dennis Barron's uh, remainder of his term. That's correct. Motion been made. Do I have a second? Second. Second. It. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The motion carries. Uh, and we have a new application for the LEPC board for Martin Robert, which we know him as Marty Roberts. Um, get him in here for interview. And also, I think you, I think I've seen an email or something coming through. That, hey, he would like to fill the vacancy on number one fire interview. Other activities on board and commissions. If not, we, Ms. Moth, you're up in with Honorary County Council person. Okay, Alexander Brady, come right up here. We've got a few folks here today. You can tell them about your activities in school and which school you go to and all those kind of stuff. I'm Alexander Brady. I go to Hedgesville High School. I'm actually the senior class president as well as the swim captain of Hedgesville High Swim. Um, and my plans for college is to go to view for psychology. Very active. Gives us all more reason we need an indoor pool down there. Yeah, the closest one's Shepherd. So. It's pretty cold out there, right? Now. Yes, it is. Yeah. Got a nephew that got one to believe. Michael? Michael? Uh, Jane Gum is my girlfriend. Is that right? Yes. Well, I should have met you by now. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. What's wrong with you, Doug? Me and Michael are co captains. They know I've pulled guns out on people before. <laughs> <laughs> 45 in the back. Quit while you're shot. Shot. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> ask, ask Alan Hart. <laughs> Raise your right hand. I state your name. I am Alexander Brady. You swear and affirm. You swear and affirm. I will uphold the Constitution of the United States and West Virginia. Of the United States and West Virginia. I work hard to fill responsibilities. Fill responsibilities. Office of honor. Thank you. Now, if you really want to embarrass Jane's father, you go up to him and ask him if he's going to read a newspaper and put a stick and feet in front of you when you're sitting on the couch, like he did me and his sister when I started dating. <laughs> so I I love David. He's my he's my favorite, yeah. one of my favorite men on this planet. Yeah, he's he's hilarious. He is. He's very funny. Um, all right. Next on our agenda is Maria Childers, Fiduciary Supervisor of State Accounts. There was 47 scheduled. It looks like you have 45 to present to us here. Okay. Maria, I'm going to say this is probably. Um, Possibly a meeting that you've been looking forward to, but maybe not at the same time. Mixed emotions. Huh? Mixed emotions. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> um, yesterday, uh, we did receive, we, we do have a revision, as I indicated, so now we uh, have 44 that we're presenting. Uh, Patricia Clemson, uh, we received a request to hold. Um, there is a replacement check on its way that has to go into account. the executive has to uh, administer. So therefore, we can't close the estate and um, terminate her appointment until that's taken care of. So we have 44, beginning with Rustin Adams, Margaret Elizabeth Allen, Donald T. Anderson, Jean H. Balash, Connie Beamer, Emma Rose Becker, Ralph H. Becker, Warden Glenn Brissett Sr., Charles F. Broom III, Gloria Jane Burkhart, Jerry Wayne Petro, Dorothy L. Cook, Sherry Jane Dugan, Clarence E. Eaton, Peter Charles Eisen, Carolyn Estelle Elmer, Elizabeth Michelle Beggins, Boyd Wilbur Gorham, Ruby Whitlock Harmon, Edith Elizabeth Jenkins, 
Gregory R. Malnikoff, Sr., Philip L. Martin, James Lynn Maughan, Hortense Mills, Shirley A. Parsons, Chris Laverne Paulson, Betty Francis Prather, Alan Pulse, Jr., Florence Josephine Rill, Deborah J. Ronick, which is an interim accounting, Paul Jackson Shad, Jr., Francis J. Shade, Gwen Elizabeth Shelley, Michael Wayne Smith, Brady Eston Stone Street, Charles Douglas Tucker, Joyce Carol Vonderweep, Dorothy I. Ware, Bonnie Marie Warnick, Ellen Virginia Watson, Gary B. Watson, Eskley Marie Wise, David James Wokowski, and John Richard Wonsack. Um, all right, we have a motion to uh, approve the 44 uh, state accounts. Second. Motion to make second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? <clears throat> the motion carries and the state carries. We have none to say. Uh, who knows what the first of the year will bring? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Petrie will, I'm sure, get. Uh, Initiated on that <laughs> soon enough. <laughs> All right. um, okay. okay so thank we you. Have that. And then we might as well stay there, Maria. We have a proclamation read on your behalf. All right. So um, this for one year of service. Let Miss Balk read the proclamation, then we can. <laughs> Proclamation for Maria Childers. Whereas Maria Childers has been a lifelong resident of Berkeley County, but visit the historic courthouse in a little pink dress with her grandfather, Ernest Alter, who was at one time president of the Berkeley County Commission. And whereas it was at that point in time when Maria was introduced to the Honorable John W. Small, Jr., county clerk, who would eventually offer her a full-time position after she completed high school and with her employment with Berkeley County began on July 1st, 1978. Whereas Maria started out as an assistant to Ms. Mildred Caldwell, who at the time handled all the estates for the county along with minute keeping. And whereas upon Mrs. Caldwell's retirement, July 31, 1987, Maria was appointed to take over her position as fiduciary supervisor, and Maria began handling all the estates for Berkeley County by herself. And whereas as the county grew, the commission approved funding for an additional position to assist her, and Maria interviewed and hired Janet. Hosslider in 1989, who has been with Maria ever since. And whereas Mrs. Mr. John Small acknowledged Maria's dedication to the county, having an outreach program where we should go beyond to assist citizens of Berkeley County by visiting hospitals, hospitals or private homes for citizens in their time of need, has had compassion for people in their most difficult time of need. Whereas on December 31, 2019, Maria Childers will retire as fiduciary supervisor of the Berkeley County Council on serving the county for 41 years. Now, therefore, he resolved that Berkeley County Council thank Maria Childers for her years of service and dedication to Berkeley County citizens. Wishes her well in her retirement. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, yes, it's a very emotional time, but um, my many years at the council, um, I, I can't say anything negative. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience. I've made many friends and acquaintances, and every commission and every council I have worked under, uh, wonderful relationship, most accommodating, and um, I'm just grateful to have had the opportunity to um, to serve. Very appreciate Maria, um, uh, thank you for your on this issue. Serious. Last eight years. And uh, you ran your office to be the best in the state of West Virginia. We 
had that conversation before. People like you and others in this county that makes Perfect County who it is. Your position, you're dealing with some your clients come through that door is dealing with some of the toughest things. Oh, I love them. Done with honor and respect and nothing. Well strive to achieve that. Have met that. Um, I'm not comfortable with the position of accepting outlay because I truly don't feel that I've done anything to do. I, I really don't. Um, but I do, I appreciate that. And, um, it's very good to know that I will be leaving the office in the best hands possible. Thank you. Anyone else for the county council or staff? I'd like to say that. It was about 20 years I was in your office quite a bit with different estates I was handling. And, and, yes, uh, Mrs. Malk and I go back a long way yes. in the state <laughs> administration. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you always, uh, you, you listen well, and uh, I get excited about something in the code somewhere, and I knew there's got to be an L, you know, someplace you can make a turn in there. Or, no, Elaine, you got to do it this way. But I really appreciated that friendship and uh, long time. Thank you. Else. I'll, I'll say thank you for dedicating your career <clears throat> to Berkeley County and I think anytime anybody puts as much time into something that that you have obviously it's got it has to be dear to your heart so hopefully uh, hopefully um, it, it will be uh, it will be ran the way that that you um, you feel comfortable with moving forward and and hopefully you'll enjoy your retirement um, and uh, again, I've, I've used this phrase several times when people have spoken to me about this. I know I'm going to have some preparation anxiety eventually. <laughs> I know I will. But um, it, it is to move on, surrender the mantle, and it's just every Anyone from the audience? Or I would just like to say pleasure for um, you. I it's a Thank you. I would just like I love what I do. I love the people that I deal with. She and I then have become like sisters. She's been here 41 years. I'm going on 40 some years. Uh, I enjoy every day. We have good moments, man. Overall, it's been. Thank you. Thank you. What else? If I could, uh, Mr. President. Absolutely, Mr. President. Maria has taught a lot of lawyers probate law. Lawyers come out of law school and they think they know everything. I'm people. Done the practical part of it. And she's she has always been very pleasant, not hesitant to say, Mr. Bentley, look at this code section. I think that'll turn around here on this. She's been very helpful to lawyers over the years. I've never heard a lawyer speak ill. Always been appreciative of the service that she has provided, not only to families, 
Ministry of State to lawyers who try to help them. We'll all miss her. She's done a good job, and I think she's correct. I think she's left her. She's leaving uh, at the end of the month. If I could get you to uh, chuckle before you before you leave, but I don't know how many times I sit up here and listen to you pronounce all these names correctly. <laughs> there it goes. And very she, thankful. She stuttered just a second on one of them today. I did. I did. Yeah, I <laughs> and I'm very thankful it's not me. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. All of you. Just, just one other thing, you know, when it's not only Berkeley County or the state of West Virginia she has to deal with, it's also Virginia, Maryland, over the whole United States. She yeah. has to know not what happens in Berkeley County, but also what has to be done in fiduciaries in other states. Have a lot of revenue yep. and to advise them to I had all the proper paperwork that I needed, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second, you can get accustomed to coming up to the podium, Miss Patrick. Uh, you know I don't like to use the microphone. <laughs> That's uh, it comes with the position. Yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> if I could just follow up, Norwood kind of stole my thunder there a little bit. I don't think there is any amount of education or training that can replace what Maria has, and that is the experience of being in the position dealing with the public good and bad public service is a very difficult place to be and you take what walks through the door and have to be gracious and accommodating and uh, informative all at the same time and suppress everything that might be your natural instinct at that point in time and and no one does it better than maria and everyone i think the community at large respects that, acknowledges that, and and in all of her conversations that she has, they, people still come in and ask for Maria by name. So it's going to be very difficult to assume that and take over and run the office the way she's run it in the past. So, just, just, Foundation. just one other thing. It's like, if I'm mistaken what I'm getting ready to say, Nor would correct me, that lawyers have the, the degree to practice law. Maria's the Exactly. I'm not going to touch that. No. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that true? I mean, when all lawyers graduate with, with a, the right. license to practice law? <laughs> but Maria is the profession. So thank you. I'm not going to say anything there. <laughs> <laughs> as well as doctors, they have the, the, the degree to practice medicine. Right. Thank so it's right. always learning. Thank God we yeah. don't need a degree. Thank goodness. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> yes. About 14 years ago, Maria took a chance on me. It's regretted it ever since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know better than that. I, she's been my mentor, my teacher, and for some reason, my, my psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> and, and has taught me so much and I love you and come and see us and I always tease her one day she, she'll she'll be back <laughs> she'll be back she ain't gonna retire I refuse to believe it I refuse to believe it but I love you Maria thank you Uh, Miss Cackley. Uh oh, here comes Mr. 
So I'm going to take that one back. Well, you said it right in time. <laughs> uh, but Maria and I have many, many years of working for Berkeley County. She um, um, has always displayed professionalism. Her knowledge is um, unbounding. Um, and it's only surpassed by the empathy and compassion that she shows to those people that are experiencing uh, excessive paperwork um, and policies and procedures that have to be followed after they've lost a loan. Um, she is uh, very respected. Uh, you, me you mentioned Maria's name and um, it'll be, oh, the lady in fiduciary that helped us with the estate. Um, and I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed the many years of us knowing and being together. Um, I have you by several, <laughs> I have you by several years, but I started at a much earlier age. <laughs> and, <laughs> but uh, we're going to miss you. from the audience. I didn't become a county employee until uh, the first time, uh, around 2015. And Maria was one of those ones that welcomed people into the courthouse. You know, employees, she'd come around and, and say, hey, welcome aboard. And, Yes, technically she falls under under you folks, but we also felt with Mr. Small throughout the years and all of that. So we always felt of her as one of our family members as well down to Fort House. And she welcomed everybody with open arms. And that wasn't just the employees. I heard some of the accolades referring to the folks uh, that come into the office for fiduciary and probate. And Wow. I mean, when people come down, and I've worked at lobby desk many a time, and you know, I've said, uh, try and have a good day, because some of them would come out very visibly upset and what have you. And they would often say, Maria, that lady is a godsend. She helped ease me up there. And I heard those same accolades from, from Judy and, and uh, Janet as well. But Maria? Thank you for welcoming me as a new county employee back in 2015, 2015 time frame. So thank you. Mr. Hilton. <laughs> I'll use the word commissioner since I'm more familiar with that. Uh, for, for about 35 years or so, I've had an opportunity to appear before this body on several occasions. Uh, today would be unique for the purpose. Um, for uh, that period of time, uh, I've known uh, Maria uh, as both an attorney uh, and as one of your fiduciary commissioners. And uh, I, can, I can attest without reservation that during that period of time, she possessed a, uh, a unique ability to both deal with people on a personal basis as well as semi-legal base and that's a talent that people don't possess it's extremely difficult to uh, interface with people with, as i said earlier at a time of emotional family strife a lot of times regretfully uh, and yet to do so in a, in a professional manner that people know they've been treated with respect and dignity uh, at a, a very difficult time in their life i can test her uh, technical capacity the cases that I've worked on with her, never had a word of disagreement, cooperative, responsive. She will be missed by, the, by this body, I'm at the small office, and by the county at large. And uh, it's my privilege to work with her for those periods of, that period of time. And I think that um, you're going to have a hard time filling your shoes. The lady to my left uh, will we'll come as close as anybody that you could have chosen for that particular job in the county government. So um, 
I wanted to commend somebody, I guess Mr. Small originally, but probably hiring him for uh, That was before I was even born. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm uh, uh, over 65. So, uh, I um, appreciate being told about this. And lastly, I wanted to know that I could not avoid the subpoena issued to me by Mr. Bentley. Those things today should, uh, should be complied with as full as possible. So uh, I'm here voluntarily. I just wanted to commend Maria publicly and um, let you all know what I thought of her for a long period of time. Anyone else? If not, we're going to go move on to the Honorable John Small, Jr., County Clerk, to recognize uh, Maria. Good morning, County Council and President. Good morning, sir. I appreciate the opportunity to appear here before you take your time. And I think it's most good time that Maria here, seems Hispanic to me. I've known her since she was a baby in her granddaddy's arm. He, he was on the county commission at the time, and uh, he was so proud of her. He used to bring her in the office every chance he had. And I can still remember that little pink dress. Pulling her hair. We've been friends for, I'll say, well, I've Friends of the family before I even come to the courthouse. And Marie and I have known each other, I guess, for about 42 or 43 62. years. 62 years. I'll, I'll say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> she's a wonderful person. Uh, she's going to be missed. And if there's anybody, please, in uh, public service to the, in courtesy service to the public, it's Maria. She goes behind her beyond the call of duty to help people and even comes down on the weekends or used to to help people out that traveling through here and had to do it on the seat. But I can't say, I don't know how to explain the, the quantities of this lady. She's always been there for me. At this time, I'm going to ask uh, John Oliver to uh, definitely to read a certificate of appreciation. And I will say, Mr. Small, you were my mentor <laughs> in that regard. So, um, we probably come. I know you do. <laughs> I know you do. Mr. Small. and it reads as follows. Berkeley County, County Clerk Recognition. Presented to Maria Childers to commemorate a career retirement of 41 years. This certificate to honor, recognize commitment, dedication, and praiseworthy service to the district, probate office, Berkeley County, citizens of I want you to take this time to recognize your extraordinary service, which began in my office on June 2nd, 1977, where you served as a through June 30th, 1978. Then on 1 July 1978, July 30th, 1987, you served as the full-time assistant it was on July 31st, 1987, reached another platform. You were named to be the head of the Legendary Secretary. During our 41 years, I, during your 41 years, I want to say you had I am honored to witness your long and career. Did so with honor and merit. You are, you are immaculate, your immaculate high standards of professionalism always stood out. I felt the 
is that days of yesteryear, when you first started coming into the historic courthouse in your little dress, with your grandfather, Ernestine, Alfred, who was at one time present in commission, he would be very successful. That belief as you've been extremely successful. I can't think begin to express my thanks, gratitude, admiration. Throughout the years, you've remained a true and sincere. I value your friendship more than you could ever realize. Please know that charity, office, and the fiduciary probate perfect has been in has been and will remain because of your faithful for your service. Enjoy your retirement so you will be given this fifth day of December 2019. This time we'll take breaks for photos. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. We're not going to take break now. Uh, <laughs> need a uh, motion to adopt the proclamation for Maria. So moved, sir. The motion been made. Seconded. Seconded. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. If anyone opposed, the motion carries. And if acceptable, I'll break now. <laughs>
discussion. Next on our agenda is a board uh, of commission interview with uh, Raleigh Hamilton, candidate for senior service board. Mr. Hamilton, good morning, sir. You want to come up to the podium and tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to serve on the senior service board? And, uh, sure. Sure. Well, I, I go by Scott. Uh, Raleigh is hard to spell, and <laughs> everybody can spell Scott. So call me Scott. I'm. Uh, I was a Raised in this area in Martinsburg, I moved away after college and was gone for about 35 years and moved back about eight years ago and remarried here and uh, I've been uh, not too involved with the community. I have uh, helped with the uh, planning commission on the city board and uh, but I am looking for opportunities to expand and get more involved in things. I had a lot of work to do on the house we bought. I finished that up now and have some more free time. I'm particularly interested in senior services because I'm dealing with that at home. My parents are both uh, quite senior, and uh, as are my wife's parents, so we're dealing with them. So I just wanted to, to get more involved in that kind of activity. Okay. All right, folks, this is a very relaxing conversation, so there's no reason to be nervous, but <laughs> we'll just go through it and see if anybody has any questions for you. Sure. Uh, we don't appoint at the meet, at the interview, uh, but after after we have the interview a week or so afterwards. But Ms. Muff, it's your board, so. Well, uh, evidently you said you finished the house and so now you have more free time. Yes. Um, it's the third or fourth Wednesday of the month around three o'clock. Is that no, no problem at all? Uh, your father was Dr. Is Dr. Hale. Yes. I want my uh, aunt went to school with him. <laughs> Her stories, but we won't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I appreciate your efforts. Are you interested? At, of course, seniors, you have all kinds of things from uh, uh, Meals on Wheels to actual home care and also in-house in services there at the facility. Uh, do you have any ideas of what, or have you been able to attend any of the meetings? Or anything? No, I have not. So, uh, well, I appreciate you applying, and uh, we can always use good members, particularly as people that have some time, because they have a, when's the Christmas tea coming up, Richard? Next week, this weekend. Hey, the tea comes up this weekend. <laughs> so, uh, but there's a lot of events coming up, and they always need assistance. So, uh, I really appreciate you uh, being in. Thank you. Okay. Whitaker, Scott, I uh, like you have aging parents. My uh, my dad is uh, actually in a facility with I think your maybe your aunt out of Harmony. Yep, I need it. And uh, so I saw your dad out there one day, and and. Uh, yeah, he was, he was he was my doctor. Actually, he brought me into this world, and probably my dad wanted to take me out a few times. But, uh, but I, I got to tell you the story that my dad, when he was born, he was born at home up in Cross Junction, Virginia. The doctor came to the house and delivered him, and it cost my grandfather thirty-five dollars. And I was back in nineteen thirty. Was that in Whitaker? No, well, just right outside of Whitaker, Virginia. Okay. And then when I was born, my dad wrote out a check to your dad. 30 years later, it was $350. <laughs> I thought that and I still have that check. So I hate to think what it'd be right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I'd hate to think what it would be, especially if there's any complications. But. I'm sure your dad said it was the best money he ever spent. <laughs> I don't know. If he thought he could bounce the check, he probably would. <laughs> I'm sure there was probably days he wanted his money back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but anyway, uh, thank you for your interest in, in the aging community, and, and I'm right there with you. Okay. Hell yeah. Well, Scott, thanks for uh, thanks for applying, and getting involved, uh, or wanting to get involved in uh, in helping out with uh, the community. Um, senior services is very uh, very important to take care of the senior citizens here. Um, you would be uh, on a board that has one less worry they have to deal with, and that's the upkeep of the building. Yeah, I heard that. We just recently helped them um, to solve that problem that they. I've been dealing with for many years, so um, thanks for uh, thanks for flying, Scott. I think uh, one of the things you got some great references here, but um, one of the things that you said that means a lot to me is you you get bored very easily. Yeah. Uh, so I've always looked for high energy people because those are the ones that get things done. And background of your family. On your application, I don't see why you wouldn't be a huge asset to seniors. And for 
for the other part about it is it's the ones that we realized that the ones that brought us in this world and brought the county where they are now is the entire term to assist them and fix a special person. So, uh, thank you for being here. All right, and welcome back. All right, thank you. All right. Thank you. Is that it? Right. That's thank it. Thank you. Told you it was easy. <laughs> All right. Um, next uh, for Board and Commission candidate for LEPC is uh, Jennifer Sheetra. She they got you pronounced that, did you, Penny? Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. How many, how many times were you told Good that? thing I call her out in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jennifer, same thing. You tell us a little bit about yourself, why you want to serve, and um, and, uh, and a little bit of your background. Okay. Um, well, again, my name is Jennifer Sheetram, and yes, it's a nightmare to pronounce, and if you look at the spelling of the name, it doesn't really match up. Um, I've actually been with the Berkeley Morgan County Board of Health for a little over a year. I'm the Threat Preparedness and Health Promotion Coordinator. So with my role in threat preparedness, it makes sense that I am part of the LEPC. So I've actually been attending the meetings for a little over the year, a year anyway. So regardless of whether I'm a voting member on the board, I'm still going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a, a big learning experience for me. It's actually helped me in my role at the health department with the community collaboration that makes up the LEPC. I think that's really important that you have your first responding professionals businesses, industries, and community members at the same table um, with preparedness, I think that's huge. And to know what's going on in the community um, from all those aspects has it all together. My background technically, uh, a lot of it's in business management, project management, and implementation. So I kind of use that to help with, you know, planning and uh, I read a lot of, you know, drills and things like that, the exercises that come up. So I'm hoping that that'll help you know, as we move forward with continuing to plan for disaster and preparedness. Great, great. So, like, you're well experienced in, in who we would be looking for. So, well, well uh, because I know that you've been attending meetings for the last year, mm -hmm. um, so you are currently living in Great Key. Yeah, I'm from Morgan County. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, biggest thing about our, our LEPC is trying to bring together all the emergency services and trying to get things lined up as to what's going on. Uh, do you have any ideas on uh, anything that's being left out or anything that's being covered? I think there's always room for improvement in every committee, usually. Um, so yeah, there's always bridges that need to be you know, worked out and, and manned in a different way, but yeah, there's always room for improvement. So um, We have the same thing actually in Morgan as well, so we're just revamping there. Um, so I'm hoping that there can actually be lessons learned on both ends because at the end of the day, to me, if a disaster happens, it doesn't know county lines, it doesn't know state lines. So the more we can work and coordinate on multiple levels, whether you're state, county, um, first responders, community, it's going to take everybody working together anyway. So you should always be working towards that goal of everybody, you know, on the same page. Everybody's in the same room. together. That's exactly right. The biggest issue we have in some areas, Morgan County, and mm -hmm. Berkeley has a few of them, some of these roads that don't know to be accessed mm -hmm. to get, get help in. Right. Thank you for applying. Yeah. I think, Jennifer, another thing is that every situation is different. So sure. you got to, you're constantly trying to improve on what you've done or how, what about if this happens again or this happens differently. And mm -hmm. So I'm in agreement with you. Any committee, you always can be looked at the proof pond or and, uh, not we, we shouldn't be applying for it. The way the girl shut up what you uh, I tell you there's there's not a whole lot I can really ask you other than after reading what your uh, application said I think you'd be a set to the oh, yeah. uh, pretty much the same thing I said before thanks for getting involved in the um, or wanting to get involved in helping the community out, and it sounds like sounds like you're already on that path. So, yeah, and, and one thing, if Mr. Barnhart was here, he'd ask you if you would have time to uh, attend the meetings. And actually, if you're attending them already, I don't think that's a that's a situation. 
You've got some great references with Bill and Angie. Wonderful work. And looking forward to a relationship in the future. Okay. Wonderful. Right. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. All right, next on our agenda, our other than Gary Wine, Deputy County Administrator, Financial Software. Good morning, sir. How you doing? Good. So I'm not asking to spend any money. Just get it. Good. Ed, Glad Ed, you cleared that up right off the bat. Right off the bat. Got to get that out front. Um, so just a bit of background. Um, we use a piece of, piece of financial software that dates probably back to the early 80s. Uh, it runs in a pretty dated environment. It runs on what, what is now an old IBM AS400. Uh, it's a mid-range environment. We use a little, a little technical. We use an environment where we do 5250 emulation as a client to the server to do stuff. So you'll look at it and probably say, oh, it looks like a DOS screen. So if you will, it's a green screen that's all character driven. Right? There's no cool buttons and drag and drop and all that stuff. It runs in a mode that's considered to be a batch environment. So we work, we put stuff in, we look at it, and then we post it. Ta -da, the, the reports and everything gets updated. So there's no dynamic movement of the financial numbers in a real-time environment. It's all batch. The industry, as you well can imagine, since the early 80s, has changed it. Um, so there are... There, there, there are big packages tailored around what governments like us do nowadays that are inclusive of not just accounting, but uh, human resources, time and attendance, and, and all kinds of other things that we we don't do well. Um, we do some of that. We I won't say we don't do well, but it could be improved upon. Oh my goodness, yes. I yes, can't sir. imagine it's not doing anything really well. Or well, well, it, but I mean, by that I mean that we, we're not leveraging the technology that's out there for us, right? So, not that anybody's making mistakes. It's just the the industry and the opportunities have changed. Um, we reviewed, know that this particular piece of the process is a function of the county clerk. So this is driven by the clerk's request. This is something that the clerk is interested in evaluating and potentially doing. So. What I'm here today to stand in front of you is to ask for the blessing to just go through the RFP process and evaluate what the market has for us and put a, a number on exactly what it is. No commitment in financing, not sure we can afford to do it. But just to give you some examples of things that don't happen now that could. So the process is that we write purchase orders. You sign purchase orders. They go to finance and they get paid. That all is reflected on reports that are paper driven that are handed to your county administrator. You may want to know, hey, Mr. Davis, what's what's our financial status today? Well, no, in our environment today, a true financial snapshot is about six weeks off because it takes that long for the numbers to get right. It's just how it works. In this environment with the, the software that's out there today, it can be it can be down to the transaction at this moment in time. So and the process is so for Alan to see a control reporter, he submits a request to come in. They make the time to do it, and they give him a nice tree trunk print, and he prints it, and he reads through it. All of that's eliminated. Now, in, in the environment of today, there are roles and levels, so you're not injecting the county council into the county clerk's processes. You're merely giving them the opportunity to interpret and query and suggest within the software itself. So if Alan wants to see an expenditure report from one of the departments I'm responsible for, he doesn't have to ask me and he doesn't have to ask finance. He just does it. And the same goes for dashboarding for senior executives like yourself. You want to look in and you want to look at the charts and see how much is spent and trend it from here to there. It's been out forever. We are just behind the cue ball. We're not there yet. Um, some of that has been sticking point with staffing. I can tell you that we demoed a piece of software, the county clerk did, and me and Myra and her team came out of it like, well, I can't, I have to show you the email screen that they've asked, well, when are we getting this? Whoa, 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 nobody's buying anything. Uh, at the same time, uh, your HR level, Penny and the team that she works with, the onboarding of new employees, you should see that now. It's painful how you get onboarded here as an employee. A whole bunch of paper, a whole bunch of processes, a whole bunch of visits. 
you're onboarded within this kind of, it all starts at the application process. So I come in and apply to be cook. I go online, I apply. It goes to Alan may interview them, any whoever interviews them, they select them, all of that. Then included all of my information, follows me to the next step, which is Penny, who brings you on and gets you any insurance and all that kind of stuff. She then now prints stuff out. All flows right through the same piece of software to finance. All of the stuff they attach your W nine and four and all that stuff that goes there. And the next thing you know, you're getting a paycheck. All driven the same way. So there, what now is probably hours of processes and paper and paper and paper. It was what? It's eliminated. And we just looked at one. It was just to kind of see and everybody, everybody involved. And then we let Alan let him talk to Alan. Uh, he, he's not real excitable, isn't it? But if you could have seen his face, it looked like an early Christmas present that he saw. I think it was, and he referred to you two, and he said, oh, I can answer their questions like that when they call now. So it really takes it to another level. Um, so if there's interest by this body, we would love to go through the exercises and see what, what is out there and see where the numbers lay. So is this program tied to purchasing as well? So For they sure. purchase through this For program. So sure. as soon as they purchase through this program, even if they're not writing a That's check, correct. they purchase through the program. It accuses the system to to take that from the total or show it as a uh, debit. It to the does, total. and it can, um, it can like get what we ran across this morning. Exactly. What it can get really creative. So let's just say, in the purchasing piece, these programs do really well. But it can take it to a level that gets real scary even for the computer guy like myself. So we can tie our Amazon account to the computer program. And I make a request, no more purchase orders or request positions. I go in the computer system as a department. I say I want to buy a widget 10. What vendor do you want to buy a widget 10 from? I prefer it from Amazon. It goes to purchasing. Purchasing does the pricing model that they do. It works with Amazon. It comes to the approving body. For when the purchase order gets approved, it just goes to Amazon, buys it, and it just it. it eliminates a whole. So it can do it. Particular pieces of software can do that, yes. So it does take. We have a procedure and problem now with our software. When we make a purchase, it gets approved. And the money gets encumbered and tied to a particular line item in my department. Let's just say when I went to order it, they didn't have four anymore. They only had three, and they're unavailable. So there's essentially a credit from that vendor. When that comes back here, you should see the process for us to ensure that that one, that one order, that one piece of money ends up back credited to my line item. So, or and we're getting charged the price that we got quoted. To. That's correct. All of that's eliminated. So, so it's a since it's an all-inclusive flow in the process there are no separations where it hits paper or it ends up on the desk in a file cabinet you know so i know that i pay ten dollars the rest of the purchasing system well i can get it for 975 now that track and trend is in the system so the next time that widget's purchased everybody knows it's not just well if tracy or gary or alan or penny weren't available and it was that one person that had that intimate knowledge of hey this is a bigger deal it's in there so it there's it's a big step well it sounds like a no-brainer to me that that we at least explore the possibilities and and, uh, and see what we come up with anyway at least the cost right the other thing that most of the financial software programs have budget we've made tries process this would take it, it does. to the next. So, so your application for your budget allocation starts within this piece of software. So we offer, you operate agnostic of your budget process. You're, you're set off and you go out here and you go through this whole gyration and all of this, all of this stuff. And it's, we bring you real-time information when you're discussing it. But imagine if you were real-time, we're tied to the budgeting and accounting software as we're preparing. Right? So when you want a trend or you want to see something, it's live that day. So I make my budget application. Anything you want to know historically is at your fingertips to ask. Well, we want to, ex to be progressive and extend our electro electronic way of doing accounting rather than going back to paper and pen. <laughs> please, please. 
We want to slow the process down because it's confusing. We want to make it go smoother and faster. Well, and that's definitely that's definitely a downside of the whole system because I, I've, I've heard rumors there's a candidate running for office that wants to go back to pen and paper. I'm just the computer guy. <laughs> the, the other thing that this will allow us to do, particularly we, once we get some historical data into it down the road, a lot of times during the budget process, we said in here in January for February, March, and we're going through budgets, and you'll see that you know, department head or elected official, and we use supplies and materials as an example, had $10,000 budgeted this year, current fiscal year. We're going through there, and they've requested twelve or $14,000 next fiscal year. Look at spending and encumbered, they've only, they've only expended 10%. We know that at the end of the year, it's clear. that's pretty much going to be spent down. So we can start to, without have to manually go the system, we can start to track those trends and we can see, oh yeah, May and June, they're just, they're buying cases for the toner just to spend their money. So there's going to be analytical data <clears throat> available to us that we've never easily us that we've never had before. The other thing that it could allow us to do, depending on <clears throat> the software, we could bring payroll back um, and do, do what my pay is doing in house without going through all the gyrations that we've done. And you're right, if this council does ask for you, Mr. Davis, and Mr. Martin, to give us all kinds of stats on things that you said, track spending, where they're at in certain of the year, do they spur to the end of the year? Is that uh, unencumbered fund balance or encumbered fund balance? Or I should say, is the slush fund growing or leading? We track all that, but with, as Mr. Davis said, special efforts between you two, I'm saying, that supports that. And, and it provides the level of auditing and information sharing to the department heads themselves and to the constitution, right? So the, the piece of software that you use now does not provide that. So if the, let's just say the prosecuting attorney wants to evaluate the processes and the spending habits within her department, it's a manual process. She would have a dashboard to her department, to her responsibility, and be able to do that herself. So it, it just takes the level of uh, information in its sharing and availability completely to the moon and back from where we are today. Um, obviously cost associated. My my gut is it's probably a two to three hundred thousand dollar expenditure. I mean it's not cheap. Um, and Alan mentioned payroll. So right now we outsource payroll for the for a reason that the process is within this current system. It was a seven-day-a-week job to get payroll out every two weeks. It, it was not nice. It was, was me. Um, picture this, that payroll is no different than you would use QuickBooks or Quicken at home, the kind of things. It's designed and it's intuitive, so you no longer need to be the <coughs> payroll genius to run payroll for an organization of our size. Um, not saying that Mr. Small wants to bring it back, not saying that you would want it back, but it's an opportunity and option. And I can tell you that Mr. Small's staff has seen it both sides, both the payroll and the budget planning. And he said, I have emails. I said, well, did you order it yet? Well, parts right in front of the Myra just walked. And, and <laughs> Myra, who is in charge of it, hey, Myra, just shake your head yes or no if you would like to take some of these <laughs> So. Again, not asking for anything more than just what, you know, what is the, if the council <coughs> wants us to, to go out and see what's available. Uh, and, and Gary, you know, we talked about the cost being two to three hundred thousand dollars, but we talked about the potential savings that it would save. Huge. Huge, like everything else. The ROI, we would come to you with that. I mean, you have to assume savings on the purchasing side. Um, ju just tracking and having intimate knowledge of we just spent the better part of $3 million on HVAC and stuff, right? 
And obviously we track that and, and trend what's happening on savings there. But now if you want to watch the, the gas bill, if you want to watch electric bills, it's dashboarded for you for the executive level folks to just look at and get their answer. You don't need to say, hey, to a bean counter, can you, and I'll quote Mr. Cobain, can you run me a spreadsheet for the last 10 years? You just say, show me this here, and it, it, it is designed for today's work. I want to move forward, I'm sure. Definitely. We'll do it. Tomorrow. I have other technical questions later. We'll probably get an input. It, it'll t this isn't this isn't a fast process. I mean, we'll bid it. I know of probably three vendors that that are interested, and we would assess it all and bet it all. This is probably after budget by the time we would come back. Hopefully, we can have a number before budget's finally concluded. But it'll take a while. Well, I'll go ahead and ask it now. Refresh my memory. What's the name of the program or the uh, site you go to for the spending? WB Checkbook. WB Checkbook. We want to look at something that would. Compatible to that when they take our data, though? They all are. So even our current system is. We do an export and import into that all the okay. time. And, and that is for public reference. Right. Right? Um, we've been a member of that now for a better part of a year and a half. Right. Um, and this would do the same thing. So there's other things that are involved here. Uh, the county clerk's finance office gives data to the sheriff's tax office and vice versa. So we have to work through all of that. And we do that now. It's no different than we've been through it over and over and over again. So we aren't talking about passing the load or asking any other cost to do to do anything. We'll do it differently, but it'll all work together. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Need a motion to go in executive session for pending legal matters and county council personnel. Move. Second. We are in executive session. Sir. 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 So Thank mm -hmm. you. 